Only one man could get us back in contention. The field was now spread out, but in the next three hours, the Stig climbed eight places. Then, when it was my turn, the fog came. I was completely blind. Nora. Because the visibility had slowed James to a crawl, I thought I could get away with some fog-based japery. James and Bad news is your jokes just have me straight off. Eventually, the fog became so thick, the race was halted. And when it resumed, we were in the grey light of a summer dawn, when the drivers are all a bit dopey, as James demonstrated. It would probably be rude to point out to him that he's pulled up in next door's pit. Thank James you. Just stopped in front of him. Oh, sorry. This is the wrong pit, guys. Oh, well, never mind. It's close enough. Next door's pit was home to the Saxondale team, who were using a diesel BMW like ours. After the calamities, they were now our main rivals. As Jeremy G'd up the capacity crowd... Do a Mexican race! Go again! Yeah! The Stig made mincemeat of him. But then, 20 minutes later, disaster. The front splitter, which helps with aerodynamics, had come off. Oh, and there was a monumental fuel leak. It, just, it was down on power, it's five seconds a lap slow. Then the splitter fell off that, that we put on. Yeah. Don't touch all James. Detachable. Yeah. That's how they do that, that's a feature. The Stig stayed at the wheel, so after the leak was fixed, he could go out again. And even though the missing splitter was ruining the handling, nothing was going to stop him. Nothing. Right now, at this very moment, computers tell us the Stig is having a wee in the car. <laughs> and I'm next. This speeded the Stig up even more. OK, it's now exactly 12 o'clock, as you can see, midday. Four and a half hours left to run. The Stig's work is done. He's got us into third in class with the third fastest diesel. And now it's all up to Hammond and then me. Should feel OK. The brakes have come off. It's just sheared a bolt. Nice! With the splitter coming off, the fuel leak and now this, it was clear our little Trojan was starting to fall apart. It was also down on power, and with no front splitter, the handling wasn't great either. The car doesn't feel as fast as it felt last night. Even I could tell something's wrong. Oh, that Aston Martin just span out in front of me. And having been up for 30 hours, I nearly followed him. Concentrate. I'm losing my concentration. Where are our bullets? To wake myself up, I organised a little present for Jeremy. Having a pee right now. Oh. At the end of Richard's stint, we were still third in class, but I knew it would be hard to stay there. The problem is, is that the Saxondale one, that silver 330, the one like ours, is 30 laps behind. We're going to lose five laps in this next pit stop. They've got their quick driver in there against me. I'm telling you, in three hours, in three hours driving, they're, they're going to be right up my back bottom. So, this was it, the final stint. I was tired out. I was sitting in a puddle of wee, the car was sick, and we had our main rivals bearing down on us. Please, car, please make it to the end of this race, I beg of you. To stay in third, Jeremy had to drive fast, but there was a problem with that. Tyres, he's got to do two hours, 20 minutes, yeah? Yes. Well, I did that to these tyres in two minutes. 
crashed. He's got to last two, two hours and 20 minutes on the same tyres. You know what I mean? Because there's no front and centre, there's no downforce at the front, and it's tearing the tyres to bits. So that we didn't need to waste time with another pit stop, Jeremy had to preserve his tyres. Unfortunately, though, this was Jeremy. Yeah! Please don't be cross with me if that last lap was a bit quick. If he's, if he's just at a 24, those will not last two hours, let alone 2.20. Just to let you know, your present pace, you're going to be shredding those tyres. Sadly, he was too busy racing Team Saxondale to listen. And I've got him! Took him on the inside at Snow. I mean, cops. Jeremy, it's Richard. I know you're busy. Tell us about the tyres. Do they feel OK? I've got Saxondale up my trumpet. I've got a Mr Gear. <laughs> Jeremy had destroyed the tyres. Just heard from Steve, we have a tyre expert in the pit lane. He's looked at the other tyres and says yours will last about another three minutes. We had to get him in. Saxondale would rack up five laps while our tyres were changed. But on fresh rubber, Jeremy could now get the hammer down. Saxondale responding 2.24. Get rubbing your rosaries, boys! Oh, God! I just tried to take the jag on the inside of the corner. It went badly wrong. If you fall off in the last half hour of the race, there's no recovery service, which means that's the end of your race. Happily, we got some luck. The Saxondale team had hit problems, so now all I had to do was nurse the car home. Come on, car. Please make it. This has been one of the best Top Gear companions of the lot. A Repmobile, transformed in ten days into a racer. Fifteen minutes to go. Starting to get a bit sloppy now, we're getting a few mistakes. Five minutes to go, and for the first time I felt this pea-stained David among Goliaths was actually going to finish, and finish well. 